Hi everybody, today I am going to show you how to make these super cute little slow stitch flower embroideries. My name is Sarah, this is my channel Sarah Humphrey Embroidery. I'd like to welcome you along today and thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. And just before we get going, I do have some thank yous to say to those of you who have clicked the super thanks button underneath the video to show your appreciation and that you're enjoying the videos. So thank you to Stacey Bernard. Bernard did an amazing quilt in our World Embroidery Day video. Do go check that out. Uh, Sonia Tashlan, Margaret Jean, Cheryl, hi Cheryl, and Belle Figorio as well. So thank you all very much. Um, it's much appreciated. And if you see a video you like and you would like to support us, the little super thanks button is just below this video. You can also join our channel members and our patrons. A new video has just gone up for you about how I made these little flower projects and then a little insight into what went into making those. So that's up now. So if you're interested in that, the information on how you can join our channel members or our Patreon page is in the description below this video. So what I wanted to do today was to take some of the elements from the flower videos that I've made. So there was this project here with the 10 flowers and then we made a little bouquet up here. If you haven't seen those, do go and check those out on the channel page. And um, this one could be a little bit daunting. A little flower bouquet, just show you that one there. Very beautiful, but if you're a beginner, you might find that a little bit daunting. And I thought, what can I show you that's easy to make with these beautiful flowers that's really good if you're just setting out on your embroidery journey? So the way I thought we could do that is just to take a single flower and we'll just make a nice project out of a single flower. And I'm going to mix it with one of my favourite pastimes and a little bit of slow stitching. So let's have a look at the samples and I'll talk through them and show you what I'm going to do. So I've got three different ones here and I've made them into three different things. So I'll talk about that. So let's just start with this one. So I've just taken the lavender flower, a very simple one to stitch, um, one of the easier ones to do. And I've just made it on a little slow stitch background. I've made this into a greetings card. It's quite nice to make your embroideries into something. Um, and you could send this to somebody else. This would make a really lovely little card to send to somebody. And I've just laid it on some background fabric. And I'll go into this a little bit more in a minute. But I've just got backing fabric and then like a plain one to build my design up onto. A little bit of scrap fabrics left over from embroidery projects when I framed it and I've cut the fabric off it. And just saved the little bits and just kind of made a little layered piece out of it, a little bit of sort of laid quilting if you like, a little bit of hand quilting and then I've got some of this lovely scrim fabric that's actually, um, I've dyed that myself, I'm having a little bit of fun dyeing stuff at the moment and there's a little bit I'm going to use there with a bit of lace on top and then I've just worked my flower on top so it's just a bit more of an interesting background, make a feature of it um, and made that into a card and a little bow to finish it off, little bows always nice to finish it off so that's my greetings card I've then done something similar with this so this is made into a little book cover I do have a video on how to turn your embroideries into book covers so I put a link up in the corner to that one if you want to see how to make this book because I'm not going to show you that in this video today um, but I just want to show you what you can do with it so my little book cover it just slips on like so so they're really easy to make and I've made the cover and then I've made one of these pieces and stitched it onto the cover. So again, just those layers of fabric. I've got something a little bit shiny there, a little bit of a sort of decorative brocade. You want something fairly plain, I would say, to do your stitching on so that the flowers show up. If you do something really textured and patterned, then um, your flower might get a little bit lost in there. So I've got something plain behind, but then underneath that you can have something a bit more decorative just to make a kind of a frame around it. Just a little scrap of fabric up there is a little bit of interest. And then I put the little daisies on there, a little bunch of daisies in the middle and another little ribbon as well just to finish it off nicely. So that's my book cover. And then I've made this one into a picture. So I put it in a picture frame. I've taken the glass out of this. You don't really want the glass to squash your embroidery. So I've taken that out and just fastened it on a, a nice paper background that I have found. But again, exactly the same process. And we've done the roses for this one. So we've made this one a little bit more of a design because I've actually cut out a little plant pot. That was out a little bit of piece of silk and I've stitched that down and I've done my roses so I've got kind of like a little pot of roses, a little pot planted, potted rose plant. Um, <clears throat> but again, the layers of fabric here, that decorative one is behind as well. A little bit of scrim on there as well. Um, just an interesting um, background to stitch your flower on. So you can just take the really simple flower, but put it on something a little bit different and suddenly you've got a completely new design. So let's show you the processes behind that. 
So I'm going to make a new design and I'm actually going to do a new flower for you as well and I'll put a PDF of the design up as well. I'll talk about that later where you can get that from um, and I'm going to show you how to do the background. So I've got my layers here I'm just going to take it apart so you can see what I have done. So there's my little bit of scrim. I'll talk about threads in a second. So I have got a backing fabric. I always like putting backing fabrics behind things. I just do it with everything, nearly everything. Um, we've got a video on that about what they are and why you should be using them and how to use them as well. So check that out if you want to know about backing fabrics. So that's my backing fabric, just a nice stable background to work everything on top of. That's just a, a cotton, by the way, an unbleached cotton. But you can use anything, any kind of cotton is good for that. Then I've got um, a um, embroidery cotton here. This is our bio washed um, antique white cotton, a little piece of that to, as my canvas is if, if you like, so the one I'm going to work on top of. So that's going on next. And then what I have done is I've got um, a piece of this natural, this is a linen cotton blend, quite like using natural fabrics, but you don't have to, you can um, put different decorative fabrics in, it's absolutely fine. So I've got quite a plain one there to put my flower on, but it needed a little bit of interest in it. So I just found a little bit of lace. Adding lace to them is really nice because it's quite subtle in the background. Um, and you've got a little bit of pattern there without overwhelming everything else. But if I put that straight on top of this one, it's sort of quite dark and quite, um, the lace is quite light and it's sort of a bit too much of a contrast. I thought I would put my flowers on, it's all getting a little bit confusing. So I just cut myself another piece of the calico just that unbleached cotton to put underneath the lace just to soften it a little bit and then I've got my nice pattern I can see the pattern but it's not going to overwhelm the stitching on top and I'm actually going to stitch some yellow flowers I'll talk about that in a second so I thought I'd get a little bit of this yellow scrim this is quite fun for for slow stitching um, projects because you can see through it a little bit and you can pull it and you can make some really interesting sort of patterns with it. So just a little piece of that from a dye lot that I had. And I thought my flowers are gonna go up here. My yellow flowers are gonna be on a green stem. So I just thought I'd put that yellow under the flowers and that will kind of make a feature of the flowers. I'm trying to incorporate the background into the stitching at the same time. So I'm going to do that. And then all I'm gonna do is pin that together, a couple of pins just to hold it in place while I do the stitching. And then I just want to show you a few other things you can use. Um, keep them fairly neutral colour, I would say. You can have a little splash of colour in there, but you want your flowers to be the feature, really. I found this little bit of fabric with some writing on. I thought that would make a nice background. There's another bit there with some flowers already on it. But then if you put your lace over the top, you could maybe add something to that. You could do these flowers and a few more up here, so you could incorporate the background into it. There's a little bit more of the scrim over the top is quite nice. That's a little kind of piece of brocade. That looks beautiful. You can use either side. They look quite different. So what the shiny side, the pattern side, you could put a little bit of that behind it. That is the one that's in the background here. A bit of that. Um, you've got some lace as well, as I mentioned before. A little bit of silk for the background. And then you could put the little piece of calico cotton on the top and stitch on top of that. So you can have a play and come up with whatever you like. Just try and remember just something a little bit plain behind the flower so that the flower stands out. What's great about these projects is you don't need loads of equipment and loads of threads either. I'm just using a few scraps of fabric. I'm going to use minimal colours as well. So I'm going to use the two colours for my flowers, a green stem and a yellow flower. And then I just sort of brought those in in a slightly paler colour for the background. I'm going to stitch all these layers together so I've got something solid to stitch on. So I've got a paler yellow and a paler green. Um, if you use the same colours it's going to stand out as much as a flower. So this is the background so we just want it to sit back a little bit. So paler yellow and a pale green but then I thought maybe it just needs a splash of a colour in there. So I just got something a bit warmer and a bit brighter. This kind of really lovely corally colour and I might just do a little bit of stitching maybe just outline around here with that colour just to add a little pop of colour. So minimal colours, I'm not going to use more than that. So two greens, two yellows and a corally 
peachy colour and I'm going to do this all in my hand I'm not going to use any frames or anything like that slow stitching it's really nice to feel the fabrics and feel the threads in your hands and enjoy the process of stitching so talking about stitching let's get going Okay, so we're going to stitch all these together first, as I mentioned before we do our embroidery on it. So I'm going to start with this nice bright coral colour, I think. And really this is just about stitching all the layers together. Now if you're not sure about slow stitching and you're confused about what it is, do check out my playlist on that. I'll put that up at the end of this video actually and see what it's all about and how you do it and what the heck it is. <sighs> so I'm just going to um, sew this part down first and put a nice border down this one to fasten all these pieces together so I'm using just two strands let me just show you that so I pulled out two strands and I've got that in a number nine embroidery needle I put a actually I haven't put a knot in the end let's do that now so you put it between your thumb and your finger put the needle over the thread once twice and then just pull that needle through and hopefully we'll have a nice little knot there we go and then I'm just going to start this by coming between the layers of fabric. Um, this is what's really nice about having all these layers. We can even go under that one actually, is that you can just start your threads behind the layers. I'm just going to come up there with my needle. The knots underneath, that will all get stitched in. And then all I'm going to do is a running stitch here. And I'm going to go through all the layers. So I'm going through all the layers now, coming from the back, coming up through this calico and through the lace. I'm just going to sew everything together. You don't need to do one bit first and then come back and do another bit. Stitch everything together. And because I'm doing it in my hand, I've got a nice loose tension. I'm not going to pull it too tightly. If you do have difficulty sewing things in your hand, you could put this on a frame, make your backing fabric a little bit bigger, fasten it um, to a stretcher bar frame, preferably, or a hoop, and then you can always cut it down to size later. So if you do need to use a frame, it's absolutely fine. Do whatever you need to do to make it most comfortable. I'm not going to worry too much about how straight it is. Ooh, and having, said, <laughs> having said that one, that's completely off. Let's just take that back. a little bit straighter than that but I'm not drawing lines on or following the lines slow stitching is about a meditative kind of stitching it's about just enjoying the process of the stitching and feeling the materials and the threads in your fingers and I really love it it can be a bit intense sometimes doing the projects that we do the flower project was quite intense amount of stitching to film so this is just really nice to do something a bit relaxing and if you're new to embroidery this is a great one to do just to get used to doing some stitches and putting some stitches in and making something beautiful very easily equal if you're experienced you can fill your boots with this one so you could make it as complicated as you like you could put a whole flower spray on it and make a big one if you wanted to so it's something for every level here which I think is really nice so I'm just going to go all the way around here now just catching that little bit of yellow scrim as well as I go up so I'm going to go all the way around down here back to the beginning and I'm going to do the same to fasten these pieces as well so I've got to the bottom I just want to show you how to finish your thread off on the back so I'm just going to go underneath that backing fabric whichever fabric you've got on the back once twice and then one more just for good luck that will be enough to hold it and you can just cut that off you've got a nice neat finish on the back Right, I can take my pins out. So we've got them more or less all held together, which is nice with one one nice um, length of running stitch. But let's do a bit more. We want to hold this down as well. So I'm going to go around this one now, I think, here. And I'm going to do it in... What colour should we do it in? Let's do it in the... Oh, I can't decide. Let's do it in the green one, I think. So again, just starting underneath 
knot disappears there, gets trapped in the fabric. Now, if you're a bit more experienced, you want to do a different stitch here, you could. You could do a little blanket stitch along the edge. I'm just going to keep this super simple now. I'm just going to stick with a running stitch just to show you how easily you can put these together. And they look really beautiful. You don't need any fancy stitch knowledge but if you have got it then this is where you can have a little bit of fun with it buttonhole along there would look really lovely you could do a bit of satin stitch over the edge you could put something decorative in you could weave a weave a back stitch that would look really lovely so this is the chance to have a little bit of play and use your skill level if you're right at the beginning just do as i'm doing just a nice easy running stitch don't worry too much about the length of it and is it neat? <laughs> Just keep stitching. Keep, keep stitching and it will come, I promise you. Don't take it out. Learn from it. Move to the next one. With the knowledge you've learnt from the previous one. And just keep making because that's the only way to learn it. So ooh, I'm touching that to that exactly the same way. So again, I'm going to go all the way around here. And this little bit that's not yet caught down will be, get caught down in this row as well. And then if I wanted to attach it to something else, like a book cover, I could then stitch around there and do that and attach it to the book cover there. Or I could just do that now just to keep the pieces together. So it depends what you want to make with it. So you might want to decide what you want to do. I think I'm going to stick it on a card backing. So I am going to stitch around there as well. So exactly the same with that. I'm going to take the yellow one now and go around the edge of that and then it's all held nicely together and then we can have a look at the stitching in the middle. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. Just three rows of running stitch in the center, in the middle and at the edge, just catching down this yellow part as well. It doesn't get more simple than that. If you're new to embroidery, just stick with that. Just holding it together, it's doing exactly what it needs to. If you're more experienced, you can add more stitches in. And then I'm just going to show you the back as well. So you can just see what it looks like on the back. Now I put a few extra stitches in here because this wasn't tied down. And although the embroidery will tie this down, it will um, sew, we'll be able to sew this down with the embroidery. I thought I'll just stabilise it so I can stitch on top of it, make it a little bit easier. So I've just done a few stitches along there, just straight up and straight back down. And you can't see the stitches and that's just holding that nice and flat. So that's all I'm going to do for my background because I want to do the flowers now that I have chosen. So I'm going to get rid of those ones and I just want to show you how I've chosen my flower. So I've got a couple of books here. So I've got the Observer's Book of Wildflowers. We've just got some beautiful little drawings in it. And it's quite good to do flowers from things that have got the drawings in because they've stylized them a little bit and I've not sort of taken a photograph. They've shown you the flower and the leaf and the stem and what it comes off. So they're quite good ones to do designs off. They're not all in colour though, these ones. <laughs> <laughs> bit of a problem so that was quite a nice book and then I've also got this one the DK what's that flower book and I found a nice one in here that I want to do so I'm going to do this fennel I thought that would look really lovely on here it's quite sort of wispy and I can see clearly that this, these are going to be French knots and we'll do some back stitch for here and some stem stitch for here I think so I'm just going to do the same stitches that I've used in that 10 embroidered flowers video as well I'm not going to use anything else it's more complicated than that so do check that out if you want to see these stitches being worked so that's what I am going to do that flower there and I've just drawn myself a little design of it. This is very rough. I will do one of these for you that's not this rough so that you can trace this and you can do this flower if you want to. So that will be a free PDF for you to download on the free stuff page of my website. There will be a link in the description below this video. and You can go and download that. And the other thing that I wanted to do is just to show you a different method to transfer that onto here. Now you can um, draw straight onto this. Um, it's a little bit harder to see through, obviously, when you've got your layers, but you could do it with a, a pen. This is a water erasable one, so I could just very lightly mark in the stem. I would be confident enough just to draw that freehand, and then all you would need is probably that curve and that curve. But if you are not, this is a really good way to do it. So I've got a bit of tissue paper here. It used to be tissue paper, very thin. Um, tracing paper is a little bit thick really and then all I'm going to do is just trace that on there so the stem and a couple of these 
little sort of branches. Any branches? Sure. That's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to put that on there where I want it. Now the good thing about doing it on this tissue paper is you can see through it and you can move it around a bit. So I want all my flower heads, I'll just show you this again, on the yellow, really, that little yellow background that I've put in. So that coming in from the corner would be quite nice, I think. So I'm going to put it there. Just going to pin it in place with a couple of pins. This method is in our five ways to transfer a design video if you want to see it in more detail. And then I've just got a piece of the green thread. So these are the two colours I'm going to use for my fennel. That's for the flowers, obviously, that's for the stems. So I've just got one strand of that in a number nine embroidery needle. I'm just going to stitch through this, but I'm going to start it the same way as I have for my other threads, because this can stay in place. We're just going to stitch over the top of this. going to go right through that tissue paper that knot's disappeared underneath and then all I'm going to do with this is a running stitch but I'm going to do the stitches quite close together so there's not much of a gap between them so on here I've got quite a gap here I'm going to do them close together so most of the stitches on the top and then we're going to rip off that tissue paper and we'll just be left with the design and because I'm going to stitch it in green I'm just going to leave those stitches in. You could take them out after you've done your embroidery but I'm going to leave them in. So I'll show you that part when we get to it and how to get the tissue paper off and just leave your stitching. Just coming up that last little bit. Final stitch and because I'm not going to take this out just going to stitch over it i'm going to finish it off on the back same way as before back and forth a couple of times get it off right here comes the fun part <laughs> We're just going to rip this off. Don't just yank it off um, nice and controlled. So the best way is to get right up to your stitching and pull sideways. Don't pull up because the stitches will pull up with it. Pull it sideways. See how easily it comes off. The stitching perforates the tissue so it actually comes off quite easy. You might find these bits a little bit more awkward. You need to get in there with some tweezers and pull it out. You can and then you can see your design on there. So there's my stem, there's my little branches um, all ready to start some stitching. Now the stems of the fennel are actually quite chunky so I'm going to use six strands to do the stems with. So I've just got those in actually chenille needle number 24. But I'm going to start in the same way, I'm going to bring it underneath there, actually underneath those stitches. So I'm going between the layers and I'm just going to hide that knot under there and just start at the end of my stem. Just pull it through and that knot will disappear so that's quite nice and tidy and I'm going to do a stem stitch so it's a little forward stitch you come up in the middle pull that through on the back so each stitch overlaps the previous stitch we've got um, videos on all these stitches check the stitch library if you're not sure forward stitch make a little loop, come up in the loop, the loop stays to the same side each time. So each one overlaps that previous one. You get a nice thick stem that way. So I'm using a stitch that will overlap the thread and the six strands as well. So I'm going to get a nice 
fixed stem on that. So just adjust the number of threads you need for the stitch and the effect that you're trying to create. And I'm just going to follow that little running stitch of stitches that I've done to put my design on and just cover those up. Actually swap to a larger needle. This is a chenille 22. Just felt a little bit stiff going through all of those layers. So if it doesn't feel right, just change it up. That feels much better now. And I haven't stranded these cottons either. I haven't taken them apart and put them back together. If you're a needle pointer, you will probably do that. But this is just for a stem. I want it to sort of look like a solid stem. I don't want um, this to fluff out at all. So I've just kept them all together. Hopefully that will just help me to get this nice smooth shape. So again, strand them when you need to. If you're mixing colours and you want to your stitches to fill out a little bit. You can pull the strands apart first, then put them back together. But I'm not worrying in this case because that's not the effect that I want. So I'm going to go right into the end there. There's my stem. And then I'm just going to finish that on the back. So I'm just going to weave that under a couple of the stitches. It's a bit of a thicker thread, so just make sure that's nice and secure. it underneath that back layer just picking up that one piece of fabric there make sure it's not come through to the front cut that off and the back's nice and neat and nothing's going to come undone even though we're slow stitching still want it to be nice and secure so i'm just going to do these little stems now and i'm going to go back to my two strands for these, what needs to be a bit more delicate, they're quite sort of fine. These ones, it's the stems that are thick, and these ones are quite fine. So back to two strands, and I'm just going to do exactly the same. I'm going to go over these, and I think what I'm going to do for this one is just get my thread started, slide it underneath all those pieces, and come up at the end there. What I could do for this is I could just fill in between those stitches. In fact, I won't. I'll just go over it. I thought I could just cheat and put <laughs> some stitches in, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go over it and I'm just going to do a back stitch over those green stitches. Some of these are quite fine, so you could just do that and leave them as they are, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So just doing a back stitch, so it's up ahead, back down to the end of that previous one. One of my favourite stitches, back stitch, because it's simple to do, but you can do so many other things with it. You can weave around it and through it and do decorative things with it. So it's a really great stitch. So just back stitch all the way back to the point there. And then I can go up this second one. Let's just try filling in every other one. It's okay to experiment, have a little play. I'm just going to come up and do stitches in between those ones that are already there. Just gives me a little bit of a variation on my... Should I do another one at the top? Yeah. And then I'm going to come back to here and go down this one. And what you can do on the back, that distance is okay from there to there. But if you wanted to jump over to here, I wouldn't jump on the back from there to there. What you can do is you can just slide your needle underneath, travel the thread across on the back, and then you can carry on. Just a little tip there just to keep it nice and neat and tidy. If you get a big long stitch on the back and it breaks, then it's going to fall out on the front. So... So just back stitch again down here. So I'm going to finish those off. I'm going to put a few in between as well. Probably just one strand in between. Come a little bit higher and then we're going to put in the flowers. So just read the description in the book and it says it has umbrella shaped flower heads with up to 30 spokes. So these are spokes. spokes. Um, you don't have to stitch all 30 but it just gives you a good idea of what this flower looks like if you get roughly the right amount. So if you understand the subject that you're stitching, then I think it always comes out a little bit better. And don't try and do them nice and evenly. 
they would be a little bit random depending on which way around the flower was it would all move again so you'll notice some of them have got bigger spaces in and some are a bit longer than others and some are a bit shorter and some are a bit thicker and some are a bit thinner this one's even overlapping so just try and vary it a bit and that will make it look a little bit more natural right so it says about the flowers flat topped cluster of tiny flowers so we're going to do small french knots for this and we need to make sure they're kind of flat across the top so it looks realistic and like fennel so i've got this really bright color they're quite a sort of acidy yellow color this is an anchored 290 um, but just something quite bright i think for this just to stand out the top and to represent these acidy flowers and i'm going to do two strands in the french knots i'm going to see what they look like if i want to go up to three and just vary that i can do that i'm not going to worry too much about where i start just going to come out there somewhere near the top now French knot you can wrap once we can do twice if you want to back into the fabric pull that tight take the needle through to the back if you hate French knots <laughs> and you can't do French knots and you get really cross and frustrated do check out our ultimate guide to French knots video because that tells you all about them and what to do if yours aren't going quite right and why that might be and how to fix it more importantly so you will end up loving French knots and if you're doing it without a frame as I am if you notice how I'm working this I am actually holding everything at once in my hand and wrapping it and going through and then pulling it tight that pulling it tight bit is the is the key to French knots so you don't do that they end up baggy or you can pull it out put it flat on the surface wrap once or twice needle goes back in pull it tight then you can pick it up and pull it through to the back so if you're working in your hand that's how to do french knots so you get them nice and even this is just practice because i've done it a lot but and i'm just going to do lots of random ones i'm going to try and cluster them at the top let's have another little look at the book again so cluster near the top and little groups around the top of the spokes and they've got flat across the top so I'm going to try and make them look like that and I'm just going to do tons and tons of them and then I might just leave a couple of gaps and come back in and do some slightly larger ones just for variation so 100 French knots later <laughs> and I think I'm going to call it finished it's a little bit difficult to know when you finished something um, but I think I could probably get a little bit more but I'm quite happy with that and I'm just going to finish it off with a little bow because I think they look really nice with little bows on them and I've got a colour that matches my corally coloured thread I've got a, um, a little ribbon, a little 4mm ribbon I'm just going to tie it around the top so all I'm going to do is just take it through to the back there come up the other side literally just tie it in a bow give yourself enough to do this you can make it smaller but it's hard to tie if it's too small and then you can just hold the middle and pull those ends till it kind of gets the right size for your little bouquet of flowers and then rather than leave those loose like that I like to take them through to the back just finishes them off a little bit let's just tighten that up once more so sort of have it curling down maybe about there just take that through to the back don't pull it too tight because you're going to pull your bow apart leave it kind of a little bit loose then all you need to do to finish it on the back is just take it underneath that fabric a few times just as we did for the previous stitches don't pull it too tight just make sure that's got a nice little curl on it like so and then we can just cut that off do the same on the other side there we go little bow to finish and I'm going to make this one into a greetings card I think now if you don't have greetings cards um, pre-cut ones you can just have a piece of card and fold it in half and you can choose whatever size you want I've got this little one I found in my stash which is quite nice it's got a little window in it so I'm going to stick it in there and all I'm going to do 
is put it in with a bit of double-sided tape. And I think if you give these to people, they make really nice little pictures. And if they want to take it out, put it in a frame like I've done with my little roses. They can, so I'm just going to fasten it in with a couple of pieces of tape. It's on the back of the backing, so it's not going to do anything horrible to the embroidery if they leave it in the card. like so we have one finished slow stitched card and if you don't like the slow stitching part particularly but you like to do the embroidery you could just do it on a plain piece of fabric you could decorate all sorts of things you could put it on your clothes you could put it on a bag so um lots of things you can do with this but i just wanted to show how simple it is to make something out of just one of the flowers I hope you enjoyed that everybody um you can agree that they look really lovely and they're very easy to do so again if you're at the beginning of your embroidery journey these are really um lovely little projects to do i will put pictures of them up on my social media so it's on my facebook page and my instagram page i'll put a picture of all of these up you can just search sarah humphrey embroidery on both of those platforms or there's links below in the description below this video to those i'll put it on the youtube community page as well so you can see that there and on our patreon page for our patrons as well and if you've enjoyed this and you want to know a little bit more about slow stitching and what it is and how you do it you can check out my playlist putting that up right now go and check out those videos and see what um what it's all about and how to do slow stitching if you've enjoyed the video do give it a thumbs up and i will see you all next time